Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Hi, Calvary. Amber here. I get the privilege of talking to you over the next couple days about Solomon. And he was the next king after King David. And so we're going to start in 1 Kings chapter 1, and his story goes through chapter 11. We're not going to read all of it, but I would highly encourage you guys to spend the next couple of days reading his story and diving into the Word of God to get to know it better. So to summarize chapter 1, David uh, is really old. He is about to die. And one of his other sons decides he's going to make himself king. And he gets some of his dad's officials and throws himself this party and says, I'm the next king. Well, Nathan the prophet and Bathsheba, who's Solomon's mom, hear about it. And they go to David and they say, hey, King David, you said that Solomon was supposed to be the next king, but your other son has pronounced himself king. What do you want to do about it? And David says, no, Solomon's going to be the next king. He tells Nathan to take him and some of the other priests and anoint him, put him on David's mule and parade him through the city and put him on his throne. And so they do that. And the whole city is cheering for King Solomon. And when his brother hears it and the people that are with him and find out that David has made Solomon king, they are terrified and they flee from the party because at that point they're rebels of the king. And so his brother goes and grabs the horns of the altar because he's terrified that Solomon is going to kill him. And he has every right to do so because he's the rightful king. And this is Solomon's response to his brother. It's in 1 King uh, chapter 1, um, and starting in verse 52, it says, And Solomon said, If he will show himself a worthy man, not one of his hairs shall fall to the earth. But if wickedness is found in him, he shall die. So, the, so King Solomon sent, and they brought him down from the altar, and he came and paid homage to King Solomon. And Solomon said to him, Go to your house. And so... There's a couple things we can see from this first chapter and the start of Solomon's story. And the first thing is that when things started to go not the way that was intended, you can read Solomon does nothing. There's nothing written or recorded from Solomon's account that he was worried or tried to take control of the situation or manipulate things so that he would make sure that he became king. He, there is no record record of him doing anything. And I think that's really important because a lot of times when we see things not going the way we want, we try and take control and make things go our way. Instead, we just should surrender to God and trust that he is in control. When we try and take control and we're so anxious and worried, we're actually trying to play God instead of just surrendering and trusting him because he is in control of everything. The second thing is how Solomon responded to his brother. He gave him grace. As the king, he had every right to put him to death right then and there, but he responded with grace. Uh, and so the question for us is, are we living as people of grace? See, God has given us grace and forgiveness of every sin that we have ever committed or will commit, and we don't deserve any of it, yet he loves us enough to give us his grace and mercy and forgiveness. And so will we live as people of God and people of grace, offering forgiveness even when people don't deserve it? So today I pray that you will choose to trust God and surrender to him in any situation that you're facing and that you will choose to be people of grace. Have a good day.